there's good news for the Titans, the division is all but theirs for the taking. However, in Tennessee, things are much easier said than done. And they know this fact all too well. It's why they went big on both free agent signings and acquisitions. They may have lost Jonu Smith, but they had a legitimate receiving weapon in Julio Jones. His talents were wasted in Atlanta, but he will hopefully receive new life here. Offense isn't the major question, though. It's the pass rush. It was their Achilles heel in 2020 as nothing they tried worked. They paid the big bucks for Bud Dupree, but how does he do without TJ Watt by his side? Does Janoris Jenkins still have a step in his game to be reliable in the secondary? It's a team that needs another big push or two to achieve championship glory, but can they get it? That's seemingly always been the question, though. King Henry can only usurp so many souls. The AFC seems to be top-heavy again, but there's a ton of competition in the middle. And that's where the intrigue will come into play. The divisions seem relatively cut and dry. Buffalo wins the AFC East, Cleveland gets the AFC North, Tennessee claims the AFC South, and Kansas City locks up the AFC West. But for wild cards, there's an argument to be made for many teams. For the three I'm choosing, I'm going with Baltimore, Miami, and the Chargers. It was very tough to pick anyone who stands out in that regard. So I'm hoping for a really exciting AFC this season. I have a gut feeling another 10-win team isn't going to make the playoffs again. Watching franchises come in with amazing expectations only to get hammered into the ground by a team they were expected to beat. Titans, it's your time to overreact to a bludgeoning by Arizona. The equation is simple. Tennessee can stop Chandler Jones from getting to the quarterback as well as a stick and stop a raging flood. Five sacks on the day for Jones alone. We must assume that Derrick Henry is the stick as well since he can do next to nothing against the Cardinals' defense. Kyler Murray looked legit again. For one day, Arizona played up to their potential. They were damn good, but that's never been the issue. It's been in consistency. Only with time can that narrative be fixed. How's this for a gimme? A Titans team that got abso shit smacked at home last week in front of the 12s. And said Titans team is now without Taylor Lewan due to a warm up injury. This should be a relatively easy Seahawks win. And it was looking that way early on. Russ was cooking with grease. Tennessee was making serious mistakes on both sides of the ball. Seattle had jumped out to an efficient 14-point lead in the middle of the third quarter. But then you realize something. You understand the hollow exterior of what this team is. Remember last year when they treated winnable games like they were a new wave of plague? Seattle made another bond with those evil vices. Those fans need more heart attacks, so why not have the offense just shut down? Dead serious, they just closed the kitchen where they sputtered out consecutive three and outs. And when you leave an exhausted defense out to dry, King Henry rumbles over goddamn everything. His demise was exaggerated. The Seahawks proved it. Under his might, he not only allows the Titans back in the game, they tie the affair and head to overtime. Only if Russ didn't overcook a bowl of cornflakes, they may have done something with it. The Seahawks blowing a major lead, nearly losing on a walk-off safety, and giving up a game-winning field goal to Fat Randy is such a Seattle way to lose a football game. Cardiologists in the area are weeping profusely. They're gonna be working a lot of overtime this week. You game even happen? It felt like such a blur with everything else going on. There were little pops of action, but for the most part, Tennessee kept the foot on Indy's injured throat and never let go. The Colts' offense did absolutely nothing. They were stuffed, slammed, smacked, stymied, and suffocated all game. Carson Wentz wasn't just carrying around two bum ankles, he was dragging a dead offense with him. Tennessee was far from pretty, too. It wasn't like they looked like the 85 Bears or something, the Colts are just bad. Chance after chance squandered at every conceivable opportunity. Let's admit it, Indy. Your team has been lost since Andrew Luck retired and they haven't been able to recover from it. Now you see the drifting mess in front of you. If only Carson wasn't so injury prone. The New York Jets. Whenever you think you can't laugh at them any further, you'd be right. There is another team that will somehow shit the bed even worse than they do. Today, that is the Tennessee Titans. I like to say that teams play down to competition when they are poor against opponents they should be crushing. That isn't correct here. It's far more laughable than that. There is bad play and then there is whatever the blue hell the Titans are doing. Tennessee will have endless chances to allow Lowell Jets to reign supreme, but they seem to have been visited by the spirit of Bud Adams. He meddled in his team's affairs to fuck every single thing up whenever they could do something. The red zone is now a chastity belt. They cannot break it. It's ironic since, holy shit, Zach Wilson was allowed out of the torture chamber today! It's cute when he's not trapped in an Iron Maiden for four quarters. You wanna know how pathetic this game was? The Jets had a lead. 
for the first time this entire season. I have some questions, Titans. How did you win football games against far superior opponents? Why did you look past a team at this level? Am I supposed to seal clap for tying the game up? You'd be lucky to get a goddamn golf clap! Now we've come to this. The game is not only in overtime, but is hijacking the broadcasts of other, far more important games. The Jets kick a field goal, forcing the serve to Tennessee to choke everything once again. Thousands of Yinzers and Cheeseheads demand blood for this insult. This game won't end. Fuck you, man tits. I hope you fucking miss this field goal. Serves you right for this puke showing. On its way. <laughs> oh god, you fucking suck! You suck so goddamn much! <laughs> and you blow it! You blew it! What do you get when you mix a city stuck in Earth's version of hell? A football team amplifying that kind of bullshit, and a visitor that just got embarrassed by the New York Jets. Trick question, I know. The answer is King Henry rummaging over anyone that dared stand against him. Jacksonville must have been the church trying to challenge his might because he was once again running with authority. I'm more surprised that this game wasn't on Thursday night like it usually is. The Titans do get their bounce back game to retain a commanding lead in tank division. Jacksonville is at least finally using James Robinson properly. Too bad there's little talent elsewhere, including on the sidelines. Behold consecutive loss number 20! You know what you need to do, boys. Break the record. Grind it out like Urban does on a Friday night. No one is giving Tennessee a chance in this matchup. They are justified. It is a team that lost in humiliating fashion to the Jets. And the Bills have been cutting down everything in their path for weeks. But you know the motto of football. Any given Sunday, anything is possible. It's technically Monday here, but Sunday is more prestige. There are a few things that make me happier in the football world than Derrick Henry obliterating defenses. The brute force, the elegant grace, and the sheer disrespect of his opponents all in one. I fucking love it. Never ever take this man away from us, football gods. Watching him play every week is a treat. Hey boys, if you're still in the Shadow Realm, can you check to see if Josh Norman is around? He hasn't been returning our calls. This endless rummaging through the Bills defense has us realize one thing. This game is an offensive duel. It's in different ways. The Bills threw raw air power in Tennessee with King Henry claiming victim after victim on his way to supremacy. Even into the fourth, we expect the Titans to run out of gas, but they just don't. They're resilient fuckers, I'll give them that. For every shot, Buffalo takes Tennessee as an answer. It's a legitimate heavyweight bout. With this Titan lead by three deep into the fourth, Buffalo almost had a dagger, but it got called back for a holding penalty. You can't let the game finish that easily. You need to up the drama and tension. Now the Bills march. Time slowly ticking away. The goal line moving ever so closer. The script is all but writing itself. Buffalo managing the clock enough to strangle the Titans at their own game. All they need is to go for the kill. Allen leans forward, and I don't think he got there! The Titans can play defense in the interior? Holy shit. Nothing against the play call by Buffalo, but that got blown up by an outstanding individual effort. Tennessee survives. Maybe I was too harsh on them for past failures. Maybe they deserve another look. I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch of this in January. If you're going to be shocked that the Kansas City Chiefs are the purest of shit against a legitimate opponent coming off a statement win, say nothing. Were you paying attention to their games at all this season? If you had, you know that the Chiefs just imitated nearly every other botched performance of theirs this season. Patrick Mahomes is slowly morphing into Pat Pick Mabloms. He's getting far too cocky with his play. It's resulting in a famous Jameis Bakery impression. The rest of the offensive talent has taken a step back. And the defense? What defense? The shit they're putting out there is supposed to be a defense? I thought there was a placeholder for the real thing to be delivered in a few weeks. Tennessee was riding momentum and solidified it with a totalitarian boot stomping. What they just did was make a mockery of the NFL's so-called king. Kansas City can't rely on elite talent when that talent is bogged down by annoying family members, arrogance, or a lack of fresh blood. The Titans just took advantage of it. When's the Chiefs wake up call coming? It needs to happen quick. Look at the wreckage, you ignorant pricks! Look at it! I didn't expect this game to be much of a duel a few weeks ago. Indianapolis looked like absolute shit at the start of the season and had lost in every conceivable manner. 
And Tennessee rattled off impressive wins against far superior opponents. Maybe there is something that needs to be said about what confidence can do for a team. Okay, Carson Wentz. He was absolutely broken to start the year, but he has shown flashes of the brilliance that led Philly to christen him as the Messiah. The Colts punch first, but Tennessee gets back up. It's a relentless fight for more than a win. It's for AFC South bragging rights. Tank division, here, not with this kind of 12 round heavyweight bout. Blows and jabs thrown left and right by both teams throughout the contest. Neither one willing to concede ground on the 120 yard battlefield. They know the stakes of this game. The long-term implications are vast and limitless. We're deep into the match with both teams tied at 31 while Indy gets the ball. Carson will give us nostalgia. Wentz faking the handoff there under pressure! The nostalgia of 2020. Carson Wentz transformed back into Carson Wentz. But then, oh, but then you see Tennessee's secondary is nothing but scotch tape and a half-drunken bottle of Cuddy Sark. Give me a Hail Mary pass and pass interference to get them shitloads of yardage to the one. Show me a tie, Jonathan Taylor. Wildcat with Wentz splitting out, and We've got a hot date with overtime. Round 13 in this fantastic bout. Neither team can do much of anything on their first two drives, but Carson needs to unleash his key perk. Hero Ball. The deadliest sin of Carson. Did Frank Reich forget about Jonathan Taylor? He wasn't allowed to do much of anything in overtime. Now they must suffer the anguish of Fat Randy and being second best in a division yet again. You may think you have no luck this season, Indy, but sometimes you've got to make your own. And you're doing a piss poor job at it. You thought you were getting out of this that easy, Tennessee? No, my friends, you have to suffer a great cost for this win. King Henry. The injury gods took him out for the season? God damn it, the league will let us have nothing good these days. Why him? Fuck you, assholes. Tonight in LA, we will see the debut of a legendary player on his new team, Adrian Peterson. He's replacing King Henry, but his conquering spirit remains with his soldiers. People said the Titans were done. They're nothing without Henry sending men into a black hole with his stiff arms. The Rams will crush them like the puny insects that they are. Tennessee took that as a challenge. Great teams always thrive when adversity is at its worst. And the Titans passed this test with flying colors. It also helps when Matthew Stafford decided to channel the entirety of the Detroit Lions franchise in the first few quarters. Did he not watch Carson Wentz try to play hero ball against this exact same team last week? The two pick sixes are more than enough for the Titans to separate themselves from their allegedly superior prey and win their fifth straight. Somewhere in an injury tent, King Henry smiles down on his men. They have succeeded, and they'll continue to hold serve in the AFC. Now go, Tennessee. On to your next victim. Saints can march into Tennessee all they want, but no matter what they do, they'll come up short. It was an uphill battle to begin with against the Titans, but New Orleans keeps getting screwed over due to both themselves and bullshit out of their control. And things were looking okay at first. They scored an early touchdown, but whiff on the extra point. They miss Will Lutz badly, and it shows big time. But time passes, the game's tied at six, and whoa, looky here! A crucial interception in the red zone. It appears you didn't have a license to disrupt offense, Saints. This is going to be called a hit to the helmet when it isn't anywhere near. Tennessee capitalizes on the penalty for six. Nothing like the bullshit of ref ball isn't there. Maybe fumbling the opening kickoff of the second half to give the Titans another easy touchdown, but I wouldn't say that's exactly fun. What might be are the Saints slowly chipping away at Tennessee's lead. They're quite hobbled themselves. They have no secondary and the defense is being held together by string. Time is ticking down and New Orleans is doing things without a chunk of their offense. Trevor Simeon, a city's counting on you. Simeon, and caught for the touchdown! An incredible touchdown, but here's the problem. Do you remember that missed extra point earlier in the game? This is where it haunts them. It's forcing the Saints to go for two. when I say they desperately miss Will Lutz? He may have been the piece that won them this game. A brutal loss to swallow. Hard fought, but no points for moral victories, unfortunately. New Orleans is still in position, but the playoff road just got tougher. What a shame. Allow me to defend the Tennessee Titans with this brief disclaimer. The Titans are heavily injured on both sides of the ball. They're about to break the record for most players used in an NFL season, and it's only halfway through the year. 
Weather and field conditions were atrocious throughout the majority of the game. Tennessee has been playing excellent football against all odds this season while dancing through the raindrops. With these considerations in mind, all I can say is this. You lost to the Texans! <laughs> what the hell even was that? This wasn't just misery, this was a form of torture erotica. Ryan Tannehill was so awful that Adam Gase is whipping out his Sam Darnold flashlight. Tyrod Taylor turned into Lamar Jackson for a game and led Houston to a shred of a positive outcome. Everything's coming up Easterby, now tie 10% of your earnings to make sure he can fill his pockets. I know any given Sunday and all of that, but this is laughable. This is the number one seed in the AFC? How pathetic is this conference? Bill Belichick is nowhere near close to finished on his revenge tour. No one will be taken prisoner. No one will be shown mercy. All that matters is that those that doubted his power will be undone. How about Tennessee, the precious number one seed of the AFC? The team injured to hell that's overcome all obstacles? Now there's a good target to make another statement. In the foreboding cathedral of Gillette Stadium, the Patriots systematically dismantled and devoured a once proud organization. The Titans are burning through players like their firewood, but there is no injury that New England will not capitalize on. They can try and fight all they can, but the hoodie will always remain one step ahead. His unit is well trained and optimized for hunting. Tennessee will be their next mantle decoration no matter what. With this convincing win, the streak of consecutive victims is now at six. And with the Titans loss, we also have a new number one seed in the AFC. Baltimore? Really? Interesting. Jacksonville Jaguars are a Dave Chappelle comedy special. All they do is deliver the laughs. They're so consistently bad, so incredibly mismanaged, so goddamn terrible at literally everything involving football. Tennessee can enjoy the free win, but that was all but expected. If they're lucky, they'll be getting King Henry back just in time for the playoffs. The Jags aren't as fortunate. James Robinson is being Heidi Fleist in the back. Trevor Lawrence spoils faster than milk in the sun. Fucking Harlem has better urban planning than Jacksonville has. We have Marvin Jones, a respected veteran, openly walking out on the team and getting into massive arguments with Joseph Devalin over here. The cult of personality is very real. He proclaimed he's a winner, and his assistants are the biggest losers this side of the goddamn state. Yeah, Urban, 2-11 is quite the impeccable winning culture these days. We can all agree this year has been insanely fucked for the NFL. Most games like the last one we recap feel like they're on some kind of drug cocktail. It's exhausting to follow this league some weeks. The only benefit is in memes fresh out of the oven. You thought it couldn't get worse. An old friend has re-emerged onto the scene. Corona Chen is back from her lengthy vacation and wreaking havoc on every sports league throughout America. The NFL has felt her wrath hard. You may have noticed all the coughing last week. It was for good reason. Over 150 <coughs> cases in the league over a five-day span. It's not Pokemon to catch. Coronavirus is running a train throughout multiple organizations. Cleveland and the Rams have over 25 players in COVID protocol. Washington has over 20. Other teams like the Bears, Texans, and Lions are getting wrecked as well. Eight teams are in enhanced COVID protocols. This is the worst case scenario we were fearing last season, and we're seeing it happen in front of our eyes. The NFLPA pleaded with the league for games to be postponed, but of course they waited until the last moment. In a shocker, the Shield cared more about game integrity than cold hard cash. The Saturday Browns and Raiders tilt has been pushed to Monday. Seahawks versus Rams and Reskins versus Eagles have been rescheduled for Tuesday. We have it again in doubleheader form, boys! Tuesday night football! Any chance we can get a Wednesday night game? For all the glorious memes? Pittsburgh has been so full of bullshit in every fucking game of theirs that I firmly believe that the NFL has money on them making it to the playoffs. With how poorly they played and managed the clock in the first half, you'd have believed that Tennessee would have cruised to a win here. The Titans are looking at that number one seed and salivating at the opportunity. It's 13-3 at halftime and the Steelers have next to no life. But if you don't believe there's massive shenanigans afoot in the second half, then you're the mistaken one. To prove my reasoning, let's flash back to before the game. Up, 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 look right there! The Titans are sullying the midfield logo before the game. Did you not learn a damn thing from the Raiders last week, Tennessee? Only horrible things can happen after such pre-game arrogance. 
The punishment for such hubris and lack of foresight will be relentless and swift. After they leave the locker room, the Titans seemingly forget how to play football. Over the next 30 minutes, everyone witnessed one of the most spectacular collapses we've seen this season. Three turnovers in 10 fucking plays. Do you think a team deserves to win with such self-destruction? Hell no, the Steelers are just gonna stand there and take what they can while Tennessee spills fucking everything. Literally everything. I don't care if the Titans are injured as shit, this kind of implosion is completely unacceptable. They're beating themselves. And despite every metric showing that they should be winning, all they can do is try to do what they haven't done all half and score points. Tennessee is hoping to generate some semblance of false hope. But we all know who the real kings of doing that are. Hang on to the ball for a second and try and find someone over the middle. Pick up the rush, there's the throw. Oh, what a tackle by Joe Hayden! Ah, uh, one yard short, how I miss that glorious meme. This game said a hell of a lot more about the Titans than it did the Steelers. Pittsburgh shouldn't be anywhere near a playoff spot since they have severe holes throughout the lineup, but I don't fucking care! The Steelers are going to the goddamn Super Bowl! All of these miracles don't pop up without divine intervention! This is a team of destiny! They are going to the Super Bowl! And I will hear no counter-arguments! My case is concrete! The hope of this city will go streaking down the strip while terrible fucking towns fly us apart! Code Red, Tennessee. The Titans have lost three of their last four and look like shit in most of their defeats. Entering a battered homeland, a confident San Francisco that's won five of seven. In normal times, the Niners would absolutely destroy a group that's been battered by 17 waves of injuries and COVID. But as you can tell, this is not a normal year. All things are as fucked as someone in Jerry Boy's private suite. When looking at the first half, San Francisco should have crushed the Titans. But let's consider the holiday here. Jimmy Jesus and the Niner defense were in the giving spirit. So many times were their fuck-ups felt inexcusable for any other reason besides a tax write-off for charity. That includes re-gifting them A.J. Brown. Think Tennessee may have missed him. Not sure might be a bit of a stretch. Regardless, the game had become a bit of a stalemate into the second half. A battle of fruitless trench warfare. That was until San Francisco finally realized they have talent at wide receiver and managed to tie the game with about two minutes left. But here's the problem. The Niners have a secondary made of some empty bottles of penny and scotch tape. Tennessee's going on a drive for their fans and dragging their playoff hopes with them. And you know what caps off such a surprising climax? Some points to walk it off. And he's got it! Like most NFL games, by the skin of its teeth. Not gonna lie, the Titans pretty much saved their season with this comeback. Ten wins should be enough to make the playoffs in time to get more reinforcements, but Niners? We need to talk. What the fuck was that? You had them right by the throat and you let it go? I'm pumping your tires and you pull this shit? No wonder why you can't win anything of note. You allow Jimmy Jesus to betray you for 30 pieces of silver. We thought this was going to be a good game to watch. It's not that Miami's been playing insanely weak opponents during the winning streak. Have you seen how well that defense has been? I was considering this as well, not gonna lie. In our cold reality against the Titans, rain wasn't the only thing hampering the Dolphins. It was their entire damn team. The defense was dead on arrival, the offense followed suit, and Tua developed a fumbling <laughs> fetish so deadly that he's now indebted to the triads. The soft schedule narrative is swelling with pride in this outcome. Miami is flopping on a beachhead. Tennessee knew the stakes of this game and slapped their southern opponents silly. It's been a weird year for the Titans. But they managed to pull through in the end despite all thrown in their way. With how well they played today, you'd have thought they went through no adversity at all in 2021. Not with how they now hold claim to not only the AFC South, but the top goddamn seed in the conference. Good work. If the Titans win here against this allegedly easy opponent, they will have successfully clinched the number one seed in the AFC. It's really hard to think considering how injured to hell and back they've been this year. The rewards for winning will be great. A bye week and much needed rest for the potential return of King Henry. This is as must win as it gets at this point. Even for all of Houston's troubles in this lost season, they are still going to fight with everything they've got. Once again, like Detroit and the Jets, it's about pride. There are rumors that the poor Patsy named David Culley will be a one and done and the Texans will want to win one if this is his last game. The Titans get out to a quick lead early, but be careful! Houston, the object in your rearview mirror is closer than they appear. 
General Mills is leading drives against their defense as part of this complete breakfast. No matter what Tennessee and Ryan Tannehill do, they cannot escape the pursuit of their former homeland in Houston. As Davis Mills looks like a bona fide starter in this league, Gainesses throughout Nashville will be clenched as they're only up by three with four minutes left. However, in a shocking turn of events, the Titans offense clamps on for dear life to end the game. A perilous fate has been averted. The Tennessee Titans have claimed the number one seed. Really? The Titans claimed it? Man, the AFC is really fucked this year. This has been a season. So many twists and turns that it's hard to conceive with the naked eye. If you were looking at this year seriously, it was absolutely exhausting. But do you know the true bounty to cherish? The memes. It was fucking gold for this economy. Thanks to incredible collapses, fantastic comebacks, Urban Meyer's coaching tenure, and whatever the fuck Antonio Brown did in the Jets game. If the bigger games are going to be as fucked as the regular season is, I expect plenty of shenanigans to come in the future. Get ready. The NFL playoffs are about to begin. Is it weird that I find it odd that the Titans are the number one seed in the AFC? With how battered they were on the injury front? Need I remind you that Tennessee set the record for most players dressed in a regular season. Sure, the AFC is an absolute shitpile that no one deserves to win, but it goes to show that the Titans have resilience and dedication to the cause. They're a very unorthodox team in the modern NFL. They run a traditional offense, which tends to translate well to playoff football. Run downhill and heavy, don't overload the quarterback with options, have a strong short and mid-range passing game. Even then, Ryan Tannehill has shown that he can't do it alone. Their defense has been reloaded with a strong pass rush and Jeffrey Simmons fucking everything up, but the secondary is still battered with wounded. The Titans hit a skid in December that had people doubting their future, but they've made it here. It'd be nice if they got some needed reinforcements, however. Wait, wait for the king! There it is. King Henry will be making his triumphant return after being left for dead in battle. The X factors that Tennessee needs to make it far are there for the taking. This might be the best chance they have to reach their second Super Bowl. Can they find the will to do it, however? It's a question that's eluded many contenders, and hopefully the Titans won't be another to the pile. I knew something was off about them all season. I don't give a shit that they were the number one seed. They only got it because the AFC kept collapsing on itself and they play in the fucking equivalent of tank division. The Titans were far superior to the Bengals in nearly every sense of the word, except for where it truly mattered. This year has shown Tennessee a harsh truth. They aren't winning shit with Ryan Tannehill. If they get anything resembling passable quarterback play, the Titans win. But alas, like in a few other games they played this season, all we get is their relentless self-destruction. You'd think a team that ties the fucking sack record for a postseason game could move on, but Ryan surely Tana killed any chance of that happening. Every time Tennessee had a chance, if it wasn't shitty quarterback play doing them in, it was play calling trying to overthink every damn situation. This is what happens when you try to get too damn cute. You're forced to rely on an imploding Ryan Tannehill throwing picks like they're candy. This was probably their best chance to do anything and they screwed the pooch. Sadly, there's no clear solution for their woes. Who do they replace Tannehill with? Who's taking on that contract? They're stuck. And Cincinnati wins their first road playoff game in team history as a result. You let the Bengals do that? The Titans really are pathetic. You had an opportunity and you blew it.